Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com. Today I'm going to be going over a hand I played in the same $1,000 tournament that we played last week. Make sure you go back and check out that video and the previous one on PokerNews.com. Today we have pocket aces in the hijack seats. I make it 500 at 100 at 200. A tricky aggressive guy calls the button, a straightforward guy calls the small blind, and another straightforward guy calls the big blind. I have ace of hearts, ace of spades. Both players in the blinds check to me. And I elect to just check on the 987 3 diamond board. So I have no no flush draw, just pocket aces for the overpair. And this is a spot where I think a lot of amateurs just blindly continuation bet, thinking I have the best hand a lot, so I can bet and get a lot of value. The problem is, is that if you think about the hands you're going to be getting value from, it's often going to be hands like flush draws, which have 40% equity, so you're not really getting a ton of value from those. Um, straight draws, which will often have a pair, so those hands have close to 50% equity versus you. And then just a lot of hands that beat you. There are some times you get called by hands like King-9 or Ace-8, but that's pretty rare when you think about all of the Jack-10s and Pocket-9s and Pocket-8s, Pocket-7s, 6-5, 8-7, 9-7. It's all of these hands that have a lot of equity versus you. And if you do bet this and get multiple callers, you're pretty much always in give up mode on the turn and river. And for that reason, I think we would rather just check behind on the flop and see what develops. If they check to me on the turn and the turn is a safe card, like say the turn's an ace, king, queen, uh, four, three, or two, that's not a diamond, I think we can very easily bet for value at that point. Because notice, then our, our all of our opponent's draws will lose about half of their equity on the turn. So then I don't really care if they call the flush draws because I'm getting a lot of money and good. So I like checking in this spot. If I had the diamond, the ace of diamonds in my hand, I could lean either way between betting or checking, but I would almost certainly just bet because then I can get called by lots of worse flush draws and the uh, straight draws are significantly behind me because if they make a straight and I make a flush, they're going to lose some money. And also I just have the best hand a lot of the time as well. So this is a spot where I have a marginal made hand. It's probably just not strong enough to value bet. So I like checking. And this will lead to me losing this pot a lot of the time. I want to make that clear. But notice the amount I'm losing is five big blinds, right? I mean, sorry, two and a half big blinds. Do I really care if I lose two and a half big blinds? I would say definitely not. So you have to be somewhat quick to get away from marginal made hands whenever you're against a lot of players, especially if there's any flop or turn action. And believe it or not, pocket aces can just be a marginal made hand. So the turns of five of spades, and now a straightforward guy in the small blind bets 1,200, which is about two-thirds pot or so, and uh, the other straightforward player in the big blind calls. So now with my pocket aces, what do I do? There is a four straight on board, any six makes a straight. Also, someone could just have a flush, which has me beat. Someone could have two pair, which also has me beat. So I think this is a pretty easy fold. Even if the turn was a complete blank, like a two of clubs, and I faced a bet and a call, I would probably just fold given the bet came from a straightforward player. Because you have to ask yourself, what does a straightforward player think is worthy of betting from out of position into three other players? And it's uh, kind of difficult to come up with too many hands that a straightforward player will view as strong enough to bet into three players that my pocket aces beat. So... I would even I would fold this on a safe river, and the scary river, well, it's not that scary, but it's marginally scary, is certainly bad enough. So I'm just going to fold. And this looks insane to a lot of players. They think that, you know, we have pocket aces, right? You want to be playing big pots with pocket aces, but that's not really true. You want to play big pots when you have a big advantage over your opponent's range. And here, the exact opposite is taking place. My opponents have a big advantage over me, and, you know, my hand could be good. Like, if you told me you're going to, bet the flop and then check behind the turn if you get a lot of action. I, I wouldn't tell you that's insanely bad or anything. But I think we get really clean and accurate information by simply checking behind the flop and seeing what develops. If the turn was a blank, again, a blank is the, are, are the cards that basically don't complete a straight or a flush, and the straightforward player bets and this player folds, I would probably call and then likely fold to a river bet. I mean, really, in reality, the river's going to get bad a lot of the time, so I'm going to have an easy fold. If there was a blank in my opponent bets, I'm still probably just going to fold because this player is straightforward and likely not doing anything too silly. So given he's not going to do anything too silly, I think we just need to get out of the way. So that's it. 
I fold. Let's see if they if they end up showing what these players have. I don't know if the hand actually played out or not. Rivers a blank. Straightforward guy bets four thousand. Other guy folds. So given the straightforward forward guy bet four thousand on the river, he just probably had a good hand, right? And we got off the hook. We we ended up losing a whopping two and a half big blinds with pocket aces, and that's okay. You don't have to win with pocket aces every time. I always get this email once every month or so, or once every week or so, something like that, where someone emails in saying that I just, I, I get frustrated and annoyed when I lose with a hand I'm supposed to win with. What am I supposed to do about this? What am I supposed to do to fix my thought process? And you have to understand, you're not supposed to win with anything. I mean, with pocket aces here, we may have 60% equity before the flop, which means we're going to win 60% of the time, but 40% of the time, we're going to lose. And you have to understand that 40% is a lot, even 20% is a lot. And if you're 20% to lose, you have to realize that doesn't mean you're going to win 100% of the time. And I think that's what a lot of people think is going to happen. They they assume that if they're the favorite, they're supposed to win. But uh, that's not really how it works. You're supposed to win 80% of the time, and you just happen to hit that 20%. And sometimes you happen to hit that 20% six or eight or 10 times in a row, and that's okay. It happens. You can't let that ruin your mindset. So that's going to be it for this video. I want to thank you for watching. Make sure you check out pokercoaching.com. There we have a lot of interactive hand quizzes, sort of like this, except for I don't tell you what I do. I make you input your answer, and then I let you know what I think of your answer. So check that out. If you enjoy this type of thing, you can find more information for that at pokercoaching.com. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you next week.